have a stitch that I have not covered yet and it's a really fun one. It's actually a netting variation and it's called the Russian Spiral. It is really basically just netting. The difference is that you're just putting a certain bead in a certain spot and it creates this really cool spiral look. Let's take a closer look at the beads here on my board and I'll show you some of the gorgeous Russian spirals that I've been making lately. Um, you can see that I've been having an awful lot of fun with the Russian spiral because uh, I keep putting more and more color combos together. Um, this is one of my favorite things that I've done in quite a while. Uh, I just love being able to put these beautiful, in these cases I, I used fire polish and all, th all four of these were fire polish. Here I used crystals and I used a whole ombre color effect uh, in the blues greens to kind of create this oceany effect. So you can use crystals, you can use fire polish, you can use bugle beads, uh, and the way you do the actual technique is going to be the same on all of these. So uh, you're just playing with all of the different colors that you can uh, put together, the color combos. I will note, po point out that I think it looks best with a really strong seed bead color in here. This particular one is pretty close in, in bead colors here to this other one, although we did throw in the green in this one. Uh, and we used a shiny seed bead in here and I just think that it pales out. You can't really see the nice strong uh, spiral line in the seed bead as well. So when I went and used a more opaque seed bead here, uh, it's opaque and metallic, uh, it really made a difference and I liked it much better. So this one is using the nickel uh, seed bead. Here I used the permanent galvanized seed bead. Here I used the uh, sterling silver plated seed bead. So that's three different versions of silver there, just to kind of give you an idea. So let, I'm, I'm going to work on this color combo right now, and I'll show you how to do it. Let me also mention, actually, before I take those out of the screen, that on, oops, each of these three, there will be kits available in these color combos. Uh, I believe there's going to be one more uh, color combo as well as these three. So I think there's going to be four but I can promise for sure these three. And we will put a link up. That little eye up there in the corner will be a good um, place for you to click if you are looking for those kits. So here's how you start out the Russian Spiral. Uh, I'm using size 11 seed beads here and three millimeter fire polish beads. And you're gonna start out by picking up two seed beads and one of your colors, doesn't matter which. My my pile just kind of got mixed here, so I'm going to have to just pick out as I'm going along. Two more seed beads, your next color. Two more seed beads, and your third color. Now I'm using three colors. There is no reason why you can't use more colors than this. Uh, you could do it all in the same color if you wanted and then you would just get the strong spiral seed bead line as opposed to also having spiral colors. So just know that if you, if you add more colors, say I wanted to add a fourth color here, the diameter of my rope is going to get bigger. So just know that by adding another set in, you are going to get a bigger rope. Okay, so then I'm going to turn these into a circle by leaving myself about a four to six inch tail below here. I'm going to go back through all those beads again. If it helps you, you can always put a stopper bead on there. Although once you've gone through all the beads again, you don't need the stopper bead. But if you're having trouble getting through all those beads again, go ahead and put that stopper bead on there. And then you have to go past the beads in your where your tail are to actually turn it into a circle. And where I want my thread to come out is I want to be exiting one bead past one of my fire polish. So it doesn't matter which one. So I'm just going to assume I'm going to go in this direction here. And there I am, I'm going one seed bead, I'm coming out one seed bead past the fire polish. So here's where it starts to get really repetitious. You're going to pick up your next color fire polish. So the, the fire polish that you just went past 
you want to go ahead and pick that color up. So that is my medium color. So that's that teal. And then two seed beads. I'm working with the, um, what they call the heavy metal fire polish beads. Uh, it's been a really very, very popular fire polish line that I carry at jillweismandesigns.com. Uh, and I love them because they have these beautiful saturated metallic colors. The only downside is that sometimes getting through those holes, because they're coated on the outside, getting through those holes can be a little bit tricky. So sometimes where normally I'm just able to kind of just pick it up with my needle, sometimes I'll have to actually pick up the, the bead and get to get my needle through because you can kind of see here where the end is a little bit blocked up just by the coating. So I would go on the other end where it's not blocked up by the coating. And there I can find my hole and then I can poke through that coating. Okay, so it's just a little bit more difficult to get your, your needle through these beads, but it's worth it. Okay, so let me get back to this. We picked up a fire polish and two seed beads. You're going to pass through the seed bead after the next fire polish. So you're always going to be going in that seed bead past the fire polish. Okay. As I tighten, because I've made a lot of these, I'm tightening upward here. And I just realized I made a mistake. So actually the color, see how this is stacking up on top of each other. This was my light color. This was my darker color, my medium color. So what I really should have been doing is the, the bead that I was going to go through after that next fire polish, that next fire polish color is actually the color that I wanted to pick up. So let's back that up. See, I'm totally meant to make that mistake so that I could show you guys how that, how that you can identify if you're making it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so I'm going to back this out. So let me re-show you here. What you're really doing is you know that you're going to fly over this fire polish here, and that's the color that you want to pick up. So instead, I'm getting that light color and two seed beads. And now I'm flying over that fire polish to the seed bead just dire directly past it. Now that's going to line up pretty. Okay, so here we are. Next fire polish is that dark blue. So we're picking up a dark blue and two seed beads. And I'm flying over that dark blue through the seed bead right past it. Okay, so here's my last round of this uh, row. And here's my medium color that I'm going to fly past. So that means I need to pick up my medium color. Let's get that bead on there. There we go. And the two seed beads. When I'm doing this last round, there will be a step up. But here's what we're doing. So we're still just going to go, we're flying over that same color. We're going to pass through the bead that's right after the fire polish, okay? And then your step up is going to be through the fire polish that's right there and the bead that's directly after it. And there we go. We just did our, our first row. So let me show you here, for those of you who are familiar with uh, netting, this is a three bead netting. And it's just that your the beads are a fire polish, a seed bead and a seed bead. So your center of this netted wing right here is that seed bead past the fire polish. And that's the one that we're going through each time. So that you can see that while there's a visual th uh, difference because you've got a fire polish on one side of this little wing of your netting, it's just netting. So I'll do another row here with you. Uh, here we are. We're going to jump over the blue this time. So that means we need to pick up that dark navy blue. Love this heavy metal navy blue. And then two seed beads. 
We're jumping over the fire polish that's there, going through the bead just beyond it. And tightening up. Here's our medium color. Notice that the beads, the color order is different on this round. It's because when we do the step up, each time it's going to shift us over in the spiral by one unit. So don't get, don't think you're going to go dark blue, medium blue, you know, or dark blue, teal, light blue every time. It's going to shift. So that's why you really just want to look at what that fire polish is ahead of you and that's the pick, color that you're picking up. And I'm going through the bead right past the fire polish. Tightening on up. Gotta shorten up my tail here. Or my fold over. Okay, here's the last bead of this round. Get that light blue in there. There we go. And two seed beads. And this is where our step up is going to be. So we're going to do the bead past. So that finishes the round. There we go. I'm starting to get a knot in this tail. Let me undo that. Okay. And then my step up to get ready for the next round is going to be to go through the fire polish that's right there and the bead right after. There we go. I'm going to have to do a little tightening here because that's when I started getting that knot, it kind of pulled everything out of order. There we go, out of whack. So here we are. Now you can see that the next, the first bead of this next round is going to be that medium. So you are going to just keep doing that exact thing over and over and over again until you get the length that you want. So if you want a, a necklace, you'll do your necklace length. If you want a bracelet, you'll do your bracelet, bracelet length. Uh, your clasp it will add roughly an inch to your, your finished length. So uh, you could take that into account when you figure out how long you want to make this. And you just stop after you've done a step up and then you come back here and I'll show you how to add the clasp. Okay, so you spiraled and you spiraled and you spiraled and you spiraled and now you got your length. So let's take a look at how you're going to add the clasp. I'm assuming a bead woven clasp. That's how I'm going to show you how to add here. So, but I'll talk about how you would add a, um, you know, a pre-made metal kind of clasp. So you'll notice here that I did two different kinds of uh, loops on these two different bracelets. One, I actually incorporated the crystals into it. One, I did just all seed beads. I'm going to show you how to do both because the adding the crystals is only on the very last round of this. We're going to use the my beloved peyote tube toggle bar here. Uh, there is a video showing you how to make this if you do not know already how. So I will pop a link up. You can just click that little eye up in the corner and that will take you to uh, this video to show you how to make that. So I've already got the, the, the bar made. I'm going to actually show you how to do the loop section, but I will talk about how you, you, on the other side, you will add the bar. You want to be coming out one of those seed beads past the, uh, the fire polish here because see how that's the highest point on each round? There's that seed bead in between there. That's the highest point. So those three points, those three seed beads there are going to be our points of attachment. Let me get this actually out of the way here so there's not so much to look at. You're going to start out by picking up two seed beads and then a fire polish or a crystal. It's going to be here. I picked up the dark blue. It's just a little accent here. Here I picked up a crystal here and so it's up to you. You can choose which color you want to pick up for that uh, just at that one little bead there. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to pick up the teal instead of the dark blue. Then, because we're doing the loop side, now what we need to do is pick up enough beads for our loop. And let's see here. I should have counted this before, but let's see I, what how many beads I picked up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I picked up 21 beads. 
you may have to uh, fidget with that number a little bit. Your beads might be a little bit bigger, might be a little bit smaller. So, uh, but that will give you a rough idea of how many beads you want. And because I was talking, of course, I wasn't counting. So let me put a couple more on here and then I'll count. I can't walk and talk at the same time. <laughs> so we've got four, eight, 10, 14, 18, 20, 22, 23. So I put two extra on. So let me take those off. Okay, so then I'm going to come back through the fire polish in the opposite direction. There we go. And we're going to have three legs attaching to this end. So now we're going to pick up two seed beads and pass through one of the other seed beads here along that tip, one of those tip ones. So the reason we need three is so that it's centered because see how here it's the clasp is off on the side and I don't want that. So now I'm going to travel through the fire polish and through these two seed beads so that I'm coming out that last tip seed bead there. And now I'm going to pick up two more seed beads for this third leg of the, the uh, tripod. I'm going to pass up through the fire polish. There we go. Now it's centered over the top. Makes a huge, huge difference. Plus, this gives us an opportunity to do um, a reinforcement of this clasp area because one of my rules of thumb, if you've been paying attention, uh, I want at least three passes of thread through a, a clasp attach attachment because this is a point of most wear and tear on your piece. So if anything breaks, nine times out of ten it's going to be your clasp area. So if you reinforce that with multiple passes of thread, it's going to be much stronger and far less likely to break. I want to point out at this point that when you go to attach this end of your piece, everything that you're doing is identical up to adding this fire polish. What I did instead of making that loop is I just added two beads on top of that fire polish, passed through two beads on the diagonal here in your uh, toggle bar. That's You have to go through two to make it centered on the bar then picked up another two seed beads and then back down and then that's when I created those other legs of this tripod and then at that point it's just a matter of going back and forth and reinforcing and reinforcing trying to hit one of these tripod legs each time a different one when you do all that reinforcing so the technique is identical for adding the bar okay so here we are we're on our first reinforcement round of our loop what I did I could just reinforce it plain like this, but I thought I would make it more decorative. So that means that on this second, or on this first reinforcement round, I'm going to actually peyote around the loop. And I like to pass through a single seed bead past that fire polish before I start doing the peyote stitch. And by doing peyote, what I'm doing is I'm picking up a seed bead, I'm passing, uh, or I'm, I'm yeah, I'm jumping over one for it to sit next to, and I'm passing through the next one. I do have just a basic peyote primer video, and I will, if you want to click that eye up there, I will uh, put the link up there for you to see if you need some more detailed peyote instructions. So I'm just going around. It's going to look a little wonky but when I do just the single around here, but on our next pass of reinforcement, that's where we're going to make it look more finished. As I'm doing this, I'm just trying to get a nice even tension as I'm going around. So I put that my finger over there and tug. Almost. 
almost there. Now, as I get down towards that fire polish again, this worked out perfectly because now I, st I ended two beads from the end there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass through that last bead without doing a peyote stitch on top of it because like I said I just don't like to have uh, one of the sticky outy peyote beads right next to that fire polish. So it really doesn't matter whether you end up with an odd or an even number you'll just you'll just end it prior to getting to that fire polish either way and if it's one bead off right there at the cla at the uh, fire polish you're never going to notice it. If somebody is noticing it they are invading your personal space and you need to tell them to back up. Okay, so now I need to go back down into the base here. We're going to pick one of the legs to go through for reinforcement purposes. And then we're going to move to the next leg over to go back up for our last pass of reinforcing. So I'll move across the fire polish here. So come up through that bead and then up through these two to go back up top. So as I'm doing this, I'm making a mental note that I have reinforced the one between the medium and the dark and the dark and the light. So when I come back down to finish this off, I'm going to want to try to ca catch that leg that's between the light and the medium. Okay. So then I go up through the fire polish. We're going to pass through until we get to the seed beads until we get to the first sticky outie. Okay, so here's where you've got a choice. And this is where you do the choice of adding fire polish or crystals or just doing the plain loop. Oops, where's my plain loop here? Oh, there it is. Okay, so you've got the plain loop or the, the fancy loop. If you're doing the plain loop, what you're going to do here at this point is you're going to pick up two seed beads in between each one of these sticky outies. So that, and that's all it is, is picking up two instead of a single. And that gives you, uh, it will kind of bend in a little bit, which is nice because when it comes around the toggle bar end, it kind of cups it and it makes it nice and secure. So I really like doing that. Uh, if you're going to do the uh, fire polish, what you're going, or the seed, and I did it with crystals here. Here I'll do it with fire polish. I think what I'm going to do here is just pick and do all with the light colored fire polish. Again, this is, you know, this is an option for you, a design option. You can choose. So what I'm doing is I'm adding that fire polish in between each one of those beads as I go around. Because I have the three colors in here, I could have just, I could have alternated the three colors. But in this case, I'm just going to do one. And you'll just keep going all the way around until you end up, you finish with your sticky outies. You'll pass through the last two couple seed beads here, back down through the fire polish in the center, and then remember how I had made a mental note here that the leg that has not been reinforced is this one between the light colored and the medium colored, so I want to come down at this leg, and then at that point I can just end off my thread. So I would, the easiest way is just to come down this line of seed beads here and tie a knot come back to, down a little bit farther, tie a little half hitch knot, come down a little farther, two to three knots, and pass through a couple beads past your last knot, clip it off, and you're done. Go attach your uh, toggle bar the same way, and you have got an absolutely beautiful all beaded 
necklace or bracelet. So I just think the Russian spiral stitch is a lot of fun and uh, I am really glad that I got to play with putting colors together and you know there are just endless options for you to put all sorts of beads together in this particular project. All these gorgeous metallic -y fire polish uh, I have available on my website at jillweismandesigns.com. I've got those kits available also so if you like the colorways that I already put together I've got that for you. Uh, one of the things that we have been making a really concerted effort to do at Jill Wiseman Designs is make sure that we have got a really gorgeous color array in the fire polish. And as a matter of fact, I get comments all the time that we have one of the best fire polish selections out there. So make sure you check it out. I hope you have fun making Russian spirals. I want to see them. Come find me on Facebook. We've got the Jill Wiseman Designs. Uh, actually, it's, it's Jill Wiseman's Beautiful Beaded Ropes group on Facebook. Come join us. Show off your stuff to all the other Jill Wiseman and fanatics. Happy beading. Uh -huh.